All right, who's been messing around the hydroponics lab? We can't seem to find any of the young buds. Specifically, one named Sticky Icky seems to be missing, and also Purple Nurple. Well, like, look, man, uh, it, it was like 420 and stuff, and you left the lights on, and, uh... Also, there was this Asura named Thelonious Skunk running around. The hydroponics lab is getting out of control, and we need to bring control back to the hydroponics lab so these little buds have a chance to grow. Oh, hey, look, man. Uh, Dave, Dave was here, but, but Dave's not here, man. Coming up today in the Gigasaurus, we're going to discuss the Silvari and my first impressions after this weekend's beta. For those that might not be familiar with the lore, the lore of the Silvari goes something like this. They're roughly 30 years old as a race. Yep, you heard it right, 30 years. Let me go into the lore and then you can understand why they're only 30 years old. Here's the history. Um, the story of the Silvari begins with a human and a centaur. The human was Ronin, a warrior with a shining blade. He separated from his patrol, he discovered a caravan filled with strange seeds and guarded by a powerful plant creature. He took one of these seeds home and brought it to his family, only to discover his entire village had been slaughtered by the White Mantle and their powerful would-be god, the Merserat. Grieving, he planted the seeds on their graves and swore never to take up the sword again. Ronin was joined by Ventari, an aged centaur who also tired of continual conflict. Together they formed a small community, a refuge, for those seeking peace in a violent world. The tree that grew out of the strange seeds came up tall and proud, and beneath its boughs, man and centaur lived at peace. Ronin passed on in time, and the age Ventari passed on as well. But before leaving this life, the centaur carved his lessons on a marble tablet and set it among the roots of the pale tree. He then too passed on, the eldest and wisest of the centaur. The tree grew and spread her shade over the surrounding area, and in time she bore fruit. At the heart of this fruit were the first Silvari. And while they still cradled by the pale tree, she sang to them and told them what she knew of the world. The pale tree spun a dream that would be shared by all Silvari, a dream of human lives and centaur's wisdom. When these initial Silvari emerged as the firstborn, they knew something of their world and yearned to learn more. The Silvari appear human at first glance, but that comparison breaks down almost immediately. Their flesh is made of vines and leaves, their hair of foliage and petals, and their bones of stronger wood. Golden sap moves through their veins, and pollen shakes from their flesh. They are born, they would say awakened, as adults, with some knowledge of the world around them. Silvari are instilled with an inherent sense of nobility, curiosity, and need to explore. And as each Silvari explores and learns of the world, that knowledge comes to the pale tree who sings it to the next generation. So there you have it. That is the lore of the Silvari. It goes into a lot more detail than that, and you can read it on guildwars2.com and just go to the Silvari race, and you can read the entire story. It's actually a few pages longer than that. Here we are going to do show the character creation, and then after the character creation is finished, there's going to be the intro story. So for those who are looking to play Silvari on release, you might want to skip that part or turn it off or volume it down or whatever. But remember, the choices that I make in my character creation might not match the ones that you make, and that indicates how the story is going to unfold when it finally does. But basically, you're going to start off in the dream, and you're going to wake from the dream, and you have to do your first initial quest, which all races have to do. All races in this game, all professions, will always have to do an initial starter quest. For the Norn, it's fighting a big worm. For the Silvari, it's waking from the dream. After you wake from the dream, you start off naked and they give you some clothes that you saw that you were wearing in the dream and you move on from there. So here we are at the point where I'm setting up my character's expressions, facial features, hair. You'll notice the hair is almost entirely made of leaves and that one's kind of fun. It's a mushroom head. Uh, it can also be made of branches, which I don't know how it looks with a helmet. I never got my character high enough to wear a helmet, so I don't know what happens with the branches when you're wearing the helmet. They, I suppose they just get hidden inside the helmet. At first glance, the males do look more feminine than, say, the human males do in this game. That's not to say you can't make them look hard and evil, and, and my one character that you saw in the intro of this video, I made a male warrior, and you, I made his face look like solid bark, and he had like a really cool evil look to him almost. And as mentioned in the story I just read, the lore story, 
that Solvari appear human at first glance. And that's kind of what I noticed throughout the beta weekend, was that every time I was in PvP and I was going up against another Solvari, I was noticing that it was tough to tell that they were Solvari from maybe 10 feet away. But as soon as you got a little bit closer, then you noticed, ah, they aren't human, those are, they're Solvari. And Solvari have a bit thicker look to them. If that makes any sense, their arms and legs are kind of short and stout, and they're not as tall and elegant as even some of the humans, which, for people that kind of initially go, oh, that's the elf race, they're not elves. They really don't look like elves, other than the fact they've got kind of pointy ears, but their ears are made up of leaves, so is that really a pointy ear, or is it a leaf? I don't know. But other than that, they're not tall and thin and graceful like you would expect an elf. They're kind of short and stout, kind of squat. Which brings me to kind of the mindset of the arena net developers is that everything is kind of cosmetic in this game everything all races can be all professions okay so they look at each race as being almost identical except for the way their skin appears and that kind of is taken through as a theme throughout the entire game you know if you're running with a char on a ladder it's taking up the same footprint as an asura running on that same ladder so even though the char is much physically bigger, it takes up the same square footprint on the ground. There are some slight differences such as racials, and there's some racial abilities that the Silvari get and the Norn get that kind of separate them apart, but they're not radically different. You're not going to get a major advantage by playing one race over another. They're just kind of a nice feature that each race has as a benefit for that race. I guess my first impressions are that I expected them to be more elven. I thought they would be thinner and more graceful and from some of the concept art that I saw prior to me playing on this weekend I saw that they were looking more graceful and uh, when I finally started playing them I thought well they're just a little bit like tall dwarves they were kind of stout and thick so I was a little bit thrown back by that okay this is the part where I'm finished up with making my character and it's gonna go into the story so I'm not gonna talk there won't be any music you guys can go ahead and listen to this completely and then from this I'll do kind of a wrap up. All right, here we go. I am Silvari. 25 years ago, my people first appeared in Tyria. The pale tree flowered and the firstborn awakened. The dream contains my racist memories. We gain awareness here and then awaken into the world. The dream fills me with knowledge and is my connection to others. It is my inspiration, my guiding light. While here, I have discovered my purpose to face evil and destroy it. Even now, I sense my destiny calling me to awaken. My time is soon. Nature and goodness are under siege. All life hangs in the balance. If Tyria is to survive, it will need us. If we fail, the dream will be consumed by the world, and Tyria will wither and die. I dream of secrets. The voices of my people whisper to me of spider webs and hidden knives. I see the symbol of a crescent moon on the curve of a shield. It is a symbol of wisdom. The dream hints at my future. I glimpse the faces of those whose secrets I will shelter, and who in turn guard mine. I will uncover truth and fight the nightmare that festers in wicked hearts. On the eve of my awakening, I feel the earth singing in my bones. And yet I sense darkness approaching. Something intrudes upon the dream. It blocks the path to my awakening. Before I can enter the world, I must first face the sin and vanquish it. I am summoned by the dream. This is my story. So there you have it, and this is the initial starting area after you come wake up from your dream. Their background story is that they're very peaceful and peace-loving, although they do tend to war quite a bit so I don't 
quite get the connection there, but maybe it's just something I'm not seeing as far as the initial part goes. Maybe through playing the storyline, you get more of why they're a little bit combative now, and they're not just so peace-loving. Overall, I really like them. The one thing I did kind of get kind of cringy about is that they kind of have a plants versus zombies thing going on with their storyline. They're fighting the undead. Well, the Char fight the undead too, but they're fighting ghosts. Uh, so it's not necessarily bad. It's just that it, it really gets the plants versus zombies thing really <laughs> heavy duty in the game, okay? Matter of fact, there is one part of your personal story. I'm not going to ruin it for everybody, but there's one part of your personal story where you literally are protecting a plant, okay? You have to place different defenses around the plant to protect the zombies from taking out the plant. So I was like, oh my gosh, when I was, I was basically biting my lip going, this is so bad. It, okay, you could say it's bad, but it could be like an homage. We'll say it's an homage to Plants vs. Zombies, but it, it got a little bit like, I kind of cringed a bit at times because I was like, man, they're just really going down this path pretty heavy here. It's okay. It's, it's a story, it fits, and it also has a little bit of modern twist to it as far as plants fighting zombies. <laughs> so, it was alright. Anyway, overall I like the race. I think it, they're really pretty and beautiful and the females are very feminine and have uh, nice curves and stuff like that. Uh, so, I will give this race a definite play. I'm most likely going to make a Silvari Ranger for myself because I have my Hall of Monuments and all of the Hall of Monuments bows have leaves on them so I thought it would kind of fit with the Silvari a lot better. Thanks a lot for watching everybody. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, whatever you guys want to do and until next time, see ya!